I want you all to give a huge round of applause to the star of the evening, Maurice Thompson, who has been working diligently on this mandatory rental issue, amongst, uh, mandatory inspection issue, amongst other things, uh, over the course of, gosh, it's been over a year since he started that case, I know. And he's going to share with us some other things that he is uh, he's working on on our behalf. Uh, we also have a special present for him that, uh, you know, I know in most groups you get like a really nice plaque or something for doing something great for the group. We, of course, got him the thing that every landlord actually needs, which is a, a doormat for your front door. Center for Constitutional Law, and uh, he's going to fill us in on what's going on with the mandatory rental inspection stuff and what else he, he is doing for us. Can we please give him a huge round of applause? Okay, everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, like Nina was saying, she wanted me to spend a few minutes explaining why you should all support Hillary Clinton for president in 2016, so I'm going to try to do that uh, as concisely as possible, and maybe, maybe I prefer to talk about our real estate rates a little bit too, though. So, um, so most of you have heard me talk in one way or another, you know, a little bit about what we do, so I'll be, I'll be brief in that regard. I, I started the 1851 Center, which is a nonprofit constitutional rights firm back when I was 29. Uh, before that, I had been a landlord. I grew up on a farm and had a painting remodeling business, so I was a rehabber of sorts as well. And I still have my rental properties. And I remember the days that you probably all remember too, where you're the one on the side of the house maybe painting one of these houses with uh, paint chips getting in your hair and in your eyes. And, oil-based primer sticking to your skin that you have to use paint thinner to get off in your sink afterwards. And in the process of doing that, I became acutely aware of just how many dollars per hour government was taking out of my pocket that I spent doing those things. Sometimes you need to do actual physical hard blue-collar label to, labor to really appreciate what you're losing in the form of taxation, and in all kinds of regulations and what they cost you. And, and that's certainly what has motivated my work. So even though I'm a lawyer, and I know you don't like that very much, I'll tell you two things. One, I also don't like lawyers very much. And two, I only sue governments. So go easy on me. Um, so I started in 1851, and the principles we litigate are strictly ideological. So we don't do transactional work for people. We only sue governments, and our principles are basically that you own you, self-ownership. The idea is that you own yourself, you own the money you make, you own the property you buy, and you have a right to do what you want with it as long as you're not inflicting harm on any other person. You own you, government doesn't own any part of you, you're not a dairy cow to be built for the benefit of the community, for the next big tax levy, for some regulation that determines that the community should decide how your property is used instead of you deciding. If they want to decide that property is used, they can buy it from you, right? Right. But they don't want to buy it from you. Instead, so they want to dictate terms without buying it from you. So what 1851 exists to stand up against are these principles, paternalism and collectivism. Paternalism being the idea that these folks in government are like your father and you're like your child and you can't be trusted to run your own business without their supervision. And the, the idea that your tenants are too stupid to know how to look for a property to rent and to make a decision for themselves. They need the protection of government. You know, that's, that's the notion behind a lot of these regulations. And we don't believe that. We don't believe that people are stupid just because they're renters. We don't believe that you are evil just because you are the land. You are not slumlords, you are the people who house America. Your work is heroic, 
and you are entrepreneurs in one of the last frontiers of business in this country that doesn't require a government permission slip for every little thing. But as you all know too well, we are starting to slide in the real estate community towards some of those, some of those problems. We're starting to see more and more regulation of our property rights, more and more taxes of our property, and more and more command and control concepts being brought into the real estate community, all to keep small people from, from getting a foothold and becoming entrepreneurs and blowing up and becoming big. And, and this is one of the last great bastions where you can really build a business from scratch and become wealthy, and that's very important, but it's not just important to become wealthy. What I really want to instill in all of you today, if you don't have it already, is a greater sense of purpose. Um, if the purpose of your business is just to make money, you might not be very successful at even just making money, you know? Um, I want you all to think about other things besides just making money. Think about legacy, think about what you're leaving to your kids and to your grandkids, and, and think about what kind of society you want to live in and what kind of society you want to create. And the kind of society that I want to live in and want to create is one of tolerance, one where people are tolerant of the decisions of others, tolerant about others who run their businesses, tolerant about others use their property, and tolerant about the freedom to contract. The idea that two adults in the state of Ohio can enter into a contract, whether it's a wholesale contract or any other kind of contract, and that, that no, again, father uh, is going to come into the room and argue that that's somehow illegal or not in the best interest of society in some sort of warm, fuzzy sense. So, the things that I've learned in trying to vindicate these principles, we won a lot of cases, we've lost a lot of cases. I think I've won six cases at the Ohio Supreme Court, but I think I've lost probably about that many as well, to be honest with you. Um, won a bunch of federal court cases. I've lost a few of those as well. We learned from our mistakes, but here are the things that I know that we can do, is I can keep government out of your house. So that's something that we can do. And we're doing that with the Fourth Amendment. We're doing it in the rental inspection cases. And I know that we can do it in the point of sale cases as well. So if you have these issues, if you have rental inspections that you want us to fight in your community, let us know about those. If you have point of sale inspections, which I can't even believe still exists, by the way. There was a 1968 Ohio Supreme Court decision declaring point of sale inspections unconstitutional. And yet, all of these cities up in Cleveland seem to have these things. I don't know where else they exist, but we cannot knock these things out. Um, the second thing that I can tell you is that we can stop illegal taxes and fees. Um, there is a, are some cases that I've litigated that stand for the principle that when government charges you a fee, and this happens to everybody in the room in one way or another, I guarantee it. When government charges you a fee and does not provide you any sort of service or any sort of benefit, that's an illegal property tax. And right now, we're seeing all this pressure on local government budgets. So we know what they're doing is they're going through the back door instead of through the front door. They're trying to raise, to raise property taxes on you instead of putting it on the ballot and a levy like the law requires. They're trying to nickel and dime you on garbage fees and sewer fees and water district fees and whatever else it might be. Well, I can tell you, I've learned that we can stop those, and, and we will. So bring us those cases. The third thing I can tell you is that I can recover these illegal taxes and fees. It's not just that we can stop them, but in the Portsmouth <coughs> case, and in a, in a lot of other cases, here's how this works. When the inspection is unconstitutional, that means the fee that they charge you, that $100 fee, $120 fee they charge you, is also unconstitutional. You don't have a right to charge uh, somebody for something that's unconstitutional. <coughs> so the judge in that case ordered that the fees have to be returned. It's called restitution. It's reunifying the property of one who lost their property. If the government steals your car, it's got to give you the car back. If the government steals your money to do an illegal inspection, it's got to give you the money back. So that's an important principle, and that's step two of these cases. We're going to be working that throughout Ohio over the next year. The fourth thing I can tell you is that I can, in fact, protect your private property rights. Um, Ohio has much stronger protection of 
private property rights in the state constitution than is in the federal constitution. It says private property shall be held inviolable, which is a pretty strong word. And in fact, they say property rights are fundamental rights in Ohio. So we've been very successful in stopping all kinds of eminent domain abuse, whether it's quick take where they immediately seize your property, whether it's private businesses trying to seize your land for economic development or pipelines trying to seize your property. We've had good success with that. And we're also starting to make great headway on stopping regulations of property as well. It's not just the ownership, it's the actual regulations that are really really can nickel and dime you. So the fifth thing I can tell you is that we can protect the freedom of contract. The Ohio Constitution is also better than the federal in protecting contractual rights. And there's a lot of saber rattling about wholesaling right now. The state has said a few things about oh, wholesaling might be questionable, but kind of uh, under suspicion. I can tell you that we reviewed the issue. We're looking to litigate one of those cases as well. There's nothing illegal about wholesaling. If any of you are harassed for doing that, please let us know. So those are five areas where I know that we can defend your rights, where I know we have the capacity and the law. We just need the good clients to do that. And it, it's really been a pleasure to work with your various groups over time because we seem to be completely aligned. So from what I can tell, this is a room full of people that does not have their hand out asking for things from others, asking for things from government. This is a room full of people who simply wants to be left alone, to run their businesses, to make things happen, to make their lives better, to make the tenants' lives better, and in the process, to make your cities and your counties more livable and better places. So I want to help you do that. We have tremendous synergy. Our principles are aligned. And what I like about Maria is you are basically what we are. The 1851 Center is a special interest group against all other special interest groups. So we're against all special interests. My office is a block from the State House. I'm over there way too much. Ooh, I feel like I need a chemical shower every time I leave there. And I can tell you, every other trade association in the state goes to Columbus hires a lobbyist and has an agenda, me, 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 give me, give me, give me, I want, I want, I want. And all too often, they stumble over all of you in that process, whether it's your capacity as property owners, as taxpayers, or as landlords, or whatever it is, you're getting crushed up there because everybody else wants something on your backs. So our, our goal is just to get government to leave you alone. We're completely, completely aligned in that. We'd like to do it through strategic litigation. I'm very, I'm very happy and very uh, got a lot of gratitude about the funds we raised this weekend. What we're trying to do basically is hire one new lawyer at the 1851 Center who will do nothing but these issues. So I will oversee that lawyer, and that person will work strictly on RIA issues, on real estate investor issues for the entire year, which means we we'll probably start a good five to ten cases. We already have a number of those cases identified so as soon as we hit that fundraising goal we're off to the races we got about three good cases we can bring right away and you should see the results of that very very quickly litigation takes time so i can't tell you how quickly the courts are going to rule in some of these cases once we begin them but i can tell you that we're going to win most of those cases and you're going to be pretty happy with the results so i appreciate that and what i appreciate is the opportunity to defend you um, at some point in, in your life, you kind of decide what your purpose is, right? You know, uh, and at some point in my life, you know, I think I mentioned this last year, this is a great wolf lodge. I use the wolf and the sheep analogy. You know, most of society fits into two categories. You're either, a wolf, you're either the sheep or you're the wolf preying on the sheep. So you're either uh, a victim or you're an aggressor. And all too often, you people have been treated like sheep. And the goal is for you not to be treated like that anymore. So I, I hope I don't fit into either of those categories, but I like to think that I'm you know, the farmer with the shotgun shooting the wolves before they get to all the sheep. And that's my purpose. My goal is to try to stop the bullying. You know, we're an anti-bullying organization at the ground level. Stop government bullies uh, by working together, uh, 
happy to do more. So thank you for your help.